Hello viewer, welcome to this session of SHS-1 Integrated Science. I am your presenter, Edward Asante Ekufu. In this lesson, we will be using the scientific method in a controlled experiment. This is an activity-based lesson. I hope you can now follow the steps of the scientific method. Let us then perform a simple controlled experiment in the laboratory or at home. You can perform this experiment on your own or in a group with your friends. Before we begin the experiment, let us look at the objectives for this lesson. After going through this lesson, you should be able to perform a simple controlled experiment using the processes of the scientific method. This experiment will involve the growth and development of maize seedlings. You will be testing the importance of one factor, that is light. That is, the effect of light on the growth and development of maize seedlings. So then, how do you define the problem? Remember, the problem or question should be precise. Is light necessary for the normal growth and development of maize seedling? Having defined the problem, you should now look for information in the library, on the internet, in books, which are related or relevant to this subject, which is the effect of light on plant growth. You might not find exact answer to the problem. At this point of lacking full information, you form a hypothesis. That is, you make an intelligent guess. You might assume, for example, that light is necessary for the normal growth and development of maize seedlings. This hypothesis may be supported or disproved by the experiment. So what do you do then, is the question. You begin by planting three maize grains in each of the six empty cans of equal sizes and filled with equal volume of loose sandy soil. Mark three of the cans, control. So let me get my control set up. So I have my first set of beakers marked control. Now let's plant the maize in the control setup. So let's get the maize. So I have my maize right here. As you can see, we're supposed to plant three maize grains each in each setup. So we have the three each in each setup. Let's slightly push them slightly into the sand. Now let's get some water and water them. And to ensure all conditions are uniform, we're going to make sure we have equal volume of water administered to each of the setups. Okay, so I have my 50 for the first setup. Good, so I just use half of that for 
the second set. Now, for the first set, which is made up of the control, we're supposed to keep them in a dark room. So let me get my dark room. So I have with me this specially created dark room. Now, in place of this kind of setup, you can choose to use a dark cupboard at home. You can use a dark place, maybe under your bed, or any place where light will be a limiting factor, where light wouldn't be available for your setup. After conducting this, we're supposed to take the next set of beakers and label them as experimental. So let's get our experimental set. So I have the next set labeled experimental. And for that also, we're going to plant three maize grains each in each of them. And you need to make sure the maize grains are viable seeds. That is seeds that are not damaged in any way. Just pushing them slightly into the sand so they will be buried. We also ensure we administer equal volume of water on this setup also. We're trying as much as possible to make sure the conditions available to the two setups will be the same. The only factor we want to vary is the availability of light when the seeds germinate. After planting the maize seeds in, the experimental setup, we're supposed to place them, that's the experimental cans, near a window or at a place where light will be available to the setup. So let me keep my experimental setup right here. Now at this point, make sure the temperature is nearly the same as possible for both sets of plants. Water them regularly, making sure that all plants get the same amount of water. Observe these plants for the next four weeks. During the period of observation, keep an accurate daily record of the conditions of each seedling. Now take note of the following, the date on which the seeds sprout, the daily length and width of stem in millimeters, the size in millimeters, and number of leaves, color of plant. Now let us put the above information or data in a table form. Now in the table, we have a couple of columns. The first column has experimental plants. 
The second column has sprouting date. Third column, daily length in millimeters. Fourth column has daily width in millimeters. Fifth column has size in millimeters. Sixth column has number of leaves. While the last column has color of plant. For the second table, we also have the same number of columns. But this has information on the controlled plants. While the first one had information on the experimental plants. For example, for the first example of the experimental plant, plant one. So you record the sprouting date, you record the daily length in millimeter in terms of the stem, you record the daily width of the stem in millimeters, then you record the size of leaves in millimeters, then you also record the number of leaves so as the color of the plant. So you do same for all the other plants for the number of days under consideration. Now the two sets of plants will develop very differently. Those grown in light may have thick stems and large healthy green leaves, whilst those grown in the dark may have long weak stems and small yellow leaves. These results could give strong support for the hypothesis that light is necessary for the normal growth and development of maize seedlings. Remember that any control experiment must account for all factors with one single variable. In this experiment, light was the only factor that varied for the two sets of plants. If any other factor had been varied, our conclusion would have not been valid. For instance, if the dark set had been planted in a different kind of soil, you could not have known whether their poor growth was caused by the lack of light or by the poor soil. Now in summary, we have looked at how to use the scientific method in a controlled experiment. I believe you have understood the concept of control experiment after going through this lesson. Try your hands on an experiment at home and send me your feedback. That is your recordings, observation, and conclusion. All too soon, our time is up but I believe we have learned